logical reasoning by itself has its own disadvantages. In other words, it is not sufficient it is not a sufficient means through which we can obtain reliable information because for the same set of data we can reach vastly different conclusions so this brings us to what i call the scientific method to acquiring knowledge so before we discuss this method let me recap the main points i have talked about authority I have talked about intuition or a hunch. I have talked about logical reasoning. And we can break down logical reasonings into logical induction and logical deductions. And we have examined the advantages and disadvantages of these various ways through which we can acquire knowledge. But unfortunately, they are insufficient in helping us draw reliable conclusions. So what about the scientific method? This is beautiful. Science is built on the foundation of observations and experimentations. This makes science empirical in nature. When we use the word empirical, we mean that in order for our conclusions to be accepted, they must be based on experimentations and observations. In other words, the scientific method provides a systematic way of doing things. The best definition I can give you to the scientific method will be a systematic procedure used by scientists in generating and refining new ideas. So let's discuss how the process works. You see, the scientific method begins with observing the world around us. Naturally, we are curious beings. As you walk on the street, you begin to observe the world around you and you begin to ask questions. Why is that? Why is that? You know, the most favorite word of a child is why. Why, 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 why? I have a two-year-old daughter. She is all crazy about whys. And I can certainly guarantee you that our observation, our curiosity about nature causes us to ask questions. So the scientific method begins with observation of the world around us. You see, this initial observation is sometimes referred to as an observational experiment. It may be planned, it may be unplanned, or maybe preliminary data may be collected or not. When preliminary data is correct, collected, they are used actually to find patterns or features that can explain the process of phenomena. At this point, the scientist has no prior expectations of the results. Now, let me sum it up to you how the process works. This more or less is simplified and in the actual world, it is not how, it, how the, scientific, the scientific process works. It is way more complex than what I am going to present to you right now. So the scientific method begins with our curiosity. We observe the world and we ask questions. For example, you are walking down the street and you see a rainbow. 
and you begin to ask questions. How is a rainbow formed? When you ask questions, what follows next? You demand answers. These questions are called research questions. Now, when you ask the questions, obviously you formulate an answer. This anticipated response to your research question is what we call a research hypothesis. In other words, a research hypothesis is simply an educated guess or an anticipated answer to a posited question which is subject to verification through subsequent investigation or experimentation. Understand this. You start by observing. Your observation leads you to ask questions. When you ask questions, you require answers. When the initial response, the initial answers untested that you give to your research question constitute what we call a research hypothesis. Now, I must warn you that not all educated hunch or guesses are hypotheses. So the question is, how do you develop a good hypothesis?